All this could have been avoided. This is unnecessary human suffering. A resurgence of COVID cases, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Call it what you'd like, but the U.S. is heading in the wrong direction. You don't have to die. The president issuing a new mandate to keep federal workers safe. We will be guided by the science. And states are now re-implementing mask orders. Could Colorado be next? If I have to wear the mask for another month or two, I'll do it. I'm not going to like it but I'll do it because we're in this together. Plus, Pfizer now asking the FDA for approval to administer a booster shot. Why the U.S. Surgeon General says don't rush to get that third shot just yet. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Roughly a third of Americans eligible to get the vaccine are not vaccinated. And tonight, the CDC is forecasting COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and deaths likely will increase over the next four weeks. The nation's daily case average is up more than 50% from last week, according to the CDC. In fact, we're approaching the same case and hospitalization levels as one year ago. This time last year, the U.S. was beginning to see a downturn in COVID cases following the summer surge. On July 27th, 2020, the U.S. was averaging 63,000 new COVID cases per day. And today, the U.S. is averaging nearly 62,000 new cases per day. And today, the president addressing the nation pleaded with Americans to get the shot, saying it's safe, it saves lives. And the president also took some new steps to encourage vaccinations, now offering reimbursements for employers to give workers paid leave to go get the shot for themselves and their families. The president also is asking states and local jurisdictions to offer $100 gift cards to anyone who gets the shot. But the president says incentives only go so far. So he is now mandating all federal workers and federal contractors attest to their vaccination status. And if they don't attest or if they are unvaccinated, they have to wear a mask. They have to get tested multiple times a week, socially distanced, and they are also prohibited, prohibited from traveling for work. We are not fully out of the woods yet because what is happening in America right now is a pandemic, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Let me say that again. It's a pandemic of the unvaccinated. The vaccine was developed and authorized under a Republican administration and has been distributed and administered under a Democratic administration. The vaccines are safe, highly effective. There's nothing political about them. With freedom comes responsibility. And Senator John Hickenlooper says you should not use that freedom to infect someone else. He says this is frustrating for everyone, but we have to continue that mindset of we are in this together. We have to get control of this pandemic because it's our economy, it's our future, it's our schools. We are a free country and we have to recognize that free country comes with certain people's rights. Uh, but it doesn't mean that your freedom should have the the effect of putting someone else at risk. And we continue to push local school districts to make up their minds about mask policies. Today, Denver School Board member Tay Anderson said the superintendent is actively working with public health officials. Information for DPS students and parents should come next week. We also reached out to several other school districts, including Jeffco. They say the situation is still evolving, but they anticipate making a decision, only saying that it will be soon. New data from Pfizer shows a third dose of its COVID-19 vaccine can, quote, strongly boost protection against the Delta variant. Pfizer now plans to apply for emergency use authorization for a third dose of the shot just as soon as August. Now, the company says data shows after six months, their vaccine's efficacy against COVID dropped from 96% to 84%. But the U.S. Surgeon General is cautioning anybody about thinking about getting a booster shot. The government is in talks with Pfizer about the vaccine maker's studies on the boosters, but says the decision won't be made by Pfizer. It will be made by the CDC and the FDA. Ultimately, that collective information is what will drive any decision about boosters. But right now, uh, a routine booster is not being recommended for people. In order for Americans to get a third shot, the FDA has to amend its emergency use authorization or formally approve it altogether. Well, Israel is now the first country to offer booster shots to people over 60 who've already been vaccinated. Israel's president will be the first to get that Pfizer booster tomorrow. All right, everybody, take a deep breath. This is a new virus and we're constantly learning about it. Now, here is the good news. Vaccination rates are up. The U.S. is averaging more than 600,000 shots a day in the past week. The weekly average is up about 18 percent. 
Nearly 57% of the country has received at least one dose of the vaccine, and about 49% of people in the U.S. are fully inoculated. All right, so we have heard the CDC's guidance, wear masks indoors if you live in areas with high transmission rates. Masks will be required indoors in Washington, D.C., even for the vaccinated. That starts Saturday. And Washington State is now recommending masks indoors. And when it comes to Colorado, under that CDC guidance, about two-thirds of Colorado County should be reinstating mask policy. So will those mask policies come back? Denver 7's Megan Lopez has been talking to local health departments to get some answers. Megan? Anna and Shannon, the answer is a resounding maybe a lot of the different counties that I reached out to and I reached out to a lot of them today from Denver to Pitkin County. Some of them got back to me. Many of them didn't, but a lot of them said they're reviewing those CDC recommendations. They're just not ready to go back to mandates quite yet. It's not the news anyone wanted to hear, a backslide in COVID cases causing the CDC to reverse its mask recommendations. An air of disappointment. This is American tragedy. People are dying and will die who don't have to die. Echoed by the president and people who say they've done everything right. I did the due diligence and trying to protect myself and others by getting my vaccine. Now across Colorado, local and state leaders are trying to figure out what comes next. From the governor and CDPHE, no interviews, just a joint statement saying they've requested a briefing from the CDC on the science behind that guidance change. Denver reviewed the guidance and says it's recommending masks, but stopped short of saying it would require them. Jefferson and Tri-County Health, meanwhile, are waiting for more information before making any decisions. But Tri-County did say, based on the CDC's latest information, all three of the counties it represents would need to mask up. The one county that wasn't uncertain? Well, saying in a brief statement, it's not considering any changes. At the Highline Community Care Center. It's been an enormous toll Physically, uh, we've had a lot of deaths. Masks never went away. Chief Medical Officer Gregory Gam says the CDC recommendations take precautions here even further. The main new guideline is the fact that every unvaccinated staff member before they come into work needs to have a rapid test. Every day, every shift and a PCR test once a week. The state is working so hard to get all those tests and get them distributed. But he's ready for even more drastic measures. In regard to mandates, absolutely we would consider it. We've been considering it and trying to push for it through the health department and the governor's office. Anything to put an end to a pandemic that seemingly has no end in sight. So why not just go ahead and move forward each individual facility with a, a vaccine mandate? Well, Dr. Gam says that could cause some of his employees, other employees to simply quit and go to another facility that maybe doesn't recommend or doesn't have a mandate for those vaccines. And in a field that's already stretched so thin like the medical field is right now, they just cannot afford to lose anybody. So unless all of the healthcare facilities decide to do this together or the state mandates it, he says he's gonna hold off on that idea for now. I'm live in Denver, Megan Lopez, Denver 7. All right, Megan, thank you very much. And listen, we know this is frustrating. Feels like we're just in a place where we can start to move forward, start to relax, and now we're taking a few steps back. So I hope you stay with us because coming up tonight, six o'clock on Denver 7, on Denver 7 Plus for your streaming device tonight, we're gonna sit down with a behavioral health specialist who says it's okay to be angry right now. And you can see the transmission rates in your county on an interactive map that we have posted online. Just head over to the denverchannel.com or you can always watch our complete coverage on the free Denver 7 Plus app for your streaming device. The officer seen in this video pistol whipping a man last week and choking him has resigned. Officer John Halbert submitted his resignation today to Aurora's police chief. He's facing felony assault charges for that incident that left Kyle Vinson injured. The Vista Peak preparatory teacher is in jail. This one facing charges of numerous counts of sexual conduct with a minor and sexual abuse of a minor. Vista Peak preps in Aurora. We learned today Mark Lindren worked as a teacher in the Denver Metro for 20 years. He was arrested today in Arizona. It was hot, but not quite as hot today and much cooler weather is on the way for the weekend. You know, we do have limited kennel space. Local shelters are overwhelmed and they're now blaming the pandemic for an influx of animals. We have a lot of work to do to provide a safe and comfortable environment for these animals. It's an all hands on deck situation. How the Dumb Friends League is managing care for 1,500 animals. 